That, of course, is the saddest part of all, right? The saddest part of the entire thing is that we know about this metabolic slowdown. This was shown in 1915. So we've known about it for 100 years. What I think is sad is that we give people this really horrific advice to eat less and move more. And then when they fail, we blame them for it, right? And that's basically you're blaming the victim. Because here's this poor fellow or poor lady who's victimized because they're suffering from obesity, from type 2 diabetes. You give them really bad advice, which you know is going to fail, because we've all done it. It fails every single time. And then when the weight goes back, you say, yeah, you should have listened to me better. You should have had more willpower. You shouldn't have eaten that bagel, or whatever it is you tell people, right? And that's really the saddest part of all, is that we try to pretend that the advice that we give is really good, and the failure lies with all of you, right? That doesn't, doesn't make any sense, right? How can like 40, 50% of the population be so morally bankrupt that they let this happen to them? Is it not more logical that the advice that we gave was just really crappy? That seems to me much more sensible. So we're going to explain why this sort of discrepancy exists. So in order to do that, you have to understand what happens when you eat. Okay? So what happens when you eat is that insulin goes up. So most foods, almost all foods, have um, a mixture of macronutrients, fats, carbohydrates, and protein. So your insulin goes up to a varying degree. And insulin basically is the hormone that tells your body to store fat. So it stops your body from burning fat. You start to store some of the sugar and store some of the fat. Okay? And this is normal. This is a normal situation. So carbohydrates get turned into glycogen, which are chains of glucose. So chains of glucose in the liver is basically a storage form of sugar. Okay? And when you have too much of that, then your liver produces lipids, which is called de novo lipogenesis. And it basically stores fat. Okay? So when you don't eat, when you're fasting, so fasting is merely the absence of eating, your insulin levels fall. And that's a signal to start pulling some of that energy out. Right? So you're going to start by pulling some energy out from the glycogen, which is your stored sugar, and you're going to pour some, pull some energy out of the stored fat. So you can think of it, the glycogen, like a refrigerator. Right? You're storing food energy. And the reason it's like a refrigerator is that it's easy to access. So you can get put food in easily. You can take food out easily. Right? It's just food energy. And the fat is more like your freezer. Okay? So you can store more of it, but it's in your basement. You know, it's hard to get to. It's hard to get out. It's hard to put in. So you generally prefer to use your refrigerator. And it's the same idea. You have two storage forms of energy, one easy to use and one not so easy to use. The refrigerator, though, has a limited capacity. So if you, put, if you have too much stuff, you have no choice but to put it in your freezer. Now, the reason that the calories don't work is that they operate on what I call a one compartment model. Okay? So that means they pretend that all your calories goes in to your body. And it's all the same. All your calories are the same. They're stored in one giant compartment, like this sink. And when it comes to taking out energy, it all comes out of the same thing. Right? Therefore, if you follow this sort of very simplistic, incorrect model, what you see is that if you simply reduce the calories going in, you'll reduce your weight. And if you increase the calories out, you'll increase the weight. But the entire premise of this sort of calories in, calories out model is completely fictitious. Because we know that's not what happens in the body. The body doesn't have some giant vat of calories, right? You can store sugar, you can store fat. It's not some giant vat of calories that's held somewhere in your liver, right? But that's what they all pretend it is. So if you have the entire wrong idea of why this should work, then it's not going to work. What instead? is a better model is a two-compartment model. 
That is, there are two places in the body where you can store food. You've got your fridge and you've got your freezer. Your calories goes in into your fridge and your calories goes out from the fridge because that's the easiest place it goes. But there's a third thing that you have to consider and that is how much food goes back and forth between the freezer and the fridge because that's what we're really interested in. This, the fat, that's the one that's much harder to get to, right? And the question is, what's controlling this? Because that's really the key. And it turns out that the main player is insulin. We know this because insulin inhibits lipolysis, right? What that means is it stops you from getting the fat coming out. That's its job. That's its normal job. So if you have a lot of insulin, Right? So normally if you eat a huge meal, your insulin is high, it's going to tell the body to move all the, the storage in this way. If your insulin is very high, then you can't get the food back out this way. And that's the problem. So if you have a lot of insulin resistance, for example, which keeps your insulin levels very high, it's like that freezer is kind of locked away in the basement behind the locked you know, steel bar. You can't get at it. So what happens now when you start reducing your calories? If you start reducing your calories in and you can't get at your storage, what your body is simply going to do is reduce the calories out. That's what it does, right? Because it's not going to keep losing weight until you die. That's just ridiculous, right? So if you look at the Women's Health Initiative, which was a huge 50,000 person study, they reduce calories by 350 odd per day for like seven years. And they estimated that people would lose 30 pounds. Women would lose 30 pounds per year, right? So in seven years, they should have lost 210 pounds, right? Of course, that didn't happen. How much did they lose? Not even a single pound. It was ridiculous because what happened, of course, is that their body if you're not affecting the insulin, you can't get at that fat. You're just going to reduce your calories out. And notice here, of course, that we're not breaking any laws of thermodynamics, right? Calories in, calories out. Yeah, you're accounting for all the calories. But what's important is the compartmentalization of energy, right? That's what we're talking about. Not the total energy, but where it goes, right? Because that's what we want to know. If you eat and you just burn it off, who cares? That'd be great. But if you eat and all of it goes into fat, well, now you care a lot, right? But it's not that calories are in balance. If you eat an extra 500 calories, your body burns it all off as fat, uh, burns it all off as heat, yeah, who cares? You don't have any extra body fat. But if you get 500 extra calories, boom, the insulin is telling it all to shunt into here. Well, that's a problem. And that's really the problem of the two-compartment syndrome. So if you look at what happens during...